All right. So let me get your thoughts on this. So um, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm a Star Wars fan as far as it is the original trilo- trilogy, right? I'm an original trilogy guy. You're purist. Um, yes. Uh, the, the Jedi, eh, not so much. Everyone, I, Empire Strikes Back is my is my thing. Uh, Star Wars, we needed Star Wars to get Empire Strikes Back. I'm fine with those. I'd rather watch those. I, I'm not a big fan of the sequels. Um, the prequels, I think, are a great story. I just don't think the visuals hold up. They don't. Could I ask you one question, though? And, and this is the Disney era. I agree with you. For most of this conversation, except let me ask you, what was your uh, thoughts on Rogue One? I liked Rogue One. Okay. The biggest thing about that movie that I appreciated is it took the one plot hole out of A New Hope, which the gaping hole, the plans, the gaping hole. I never saw that as a plot hole. Um, Who gives what that could happen? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it could. But clearly that was a design flaw created on purpose. We want to talk about plow holes. The, the, the biggest thing is this thing's the size. If It wasn't really until Rogue One. You know, as a kid, you see the Death Star and you're like, oh, that thing's a space station, right? As they call it, a space station. Yeah, I think one time somebody in the next wing says, look at the size of that thing. Um, but until Rogue One and you saw a Star Destroyer next to it, you're like, oh, it's that big? And they just so happened to be tractor beamed in right next to where the princess was being captured like if that was the case they'd be there for four months trying to find her on this station the thing right. is enormous right well right? they didn't have four months to tell a story so well, well all right so rogue one I, I i like rogue one but this all right see so now you can see that i am a fanboy i am a star wars fanboy i have downstairs right i don't have any uh real vintage action figures okay but i have some of the black series like i'm telling you right now uh, comment section, I'm a Star Wars fan. However, if you're in your 50s and you have a room in your house with nothing but Star Wars toys, I don't get it. I, <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it because uh, I was watching this clip on Pawn Stars where they had the prototype Boba Fett. I get that. $150,000, right? One of a kind in in the package, unopened. Totally get that. Totally get it. But now they make so many action figures. They'll do a new series. Oh, now it's uh, it's the Rogue series. And it's all the new character, all the old characters again. And these guys will go out and buy them all and put them on their in their basement. And they're 50 with three kids. Well, and it's like, these are worth nothing. You're spending so much money on these things. All right, but, but it, 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 I, I mean, okay, I get that to an extent because I do have some of that in my room, not the whole room. What what I'll say, how I look at it is when you have, if you have a love of action figures or in some cases you go, you go to people's houses and they have walls of baseball cards, old, new, you know, the whole nine yards is some people collect books, old, new. It's it, It's just a collection. I don't look at it like... You, if you like something and you display it, it brings you happiness. Interesting point. You know what? That's an interesting point. And I've never thought of it that way. I've never thought of it. You're right. There's like people that have boxes and boxes of baseball cards. However, there's also guys that are in, I, I, there's a video I've seen of these two guys built the full size cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Why? I mean, not only did you start it in your garage, it got so big you had to rent studio, or rent warehouse space. How much does that cost? And then they interview these guys, and they're like, "Well, you know, when I get off of work, I come here." It's like, "What's your wife doing?" Like, like it blows my mind the amount of money they're spending. What are you gonna do? Sit in this? No, thing? I, I, I get, <laughs> I, I do get that. I, I do think though that one are the you got to look at the guys. Okay. Are these guys recently divorced? I mean, are they in like a bitter custody battle and this is their escapism? Now, granted, I will say this. If these guys were that, cause I've seen that these guys are that good at making a rendition of the millennium Falcon cockpit. Imagine what they could have done, make it something unique. That's not star Wars. If they could have said, okay, I could, let's put our minds to this and make 
this. Okay, that's a good point. And, and Rang, you're staying awfully quiet through no, this. No, I have, I, I have the answer. I'm just letting you guys talk. Okay, so, but here's, well, well, okay, so we're going to circle around to that point because that's the same problem I have with Star Wars fan films. You've got all this, you've got people that have the production capability. You have, you have all this equipment. You have the people. Why are you doing a movie based on George Lucas's vision? Why not create new characters? You've, you, you've got a guy that can do visual effects as opposed to having him, as opposed to commissioning him to make an X-Wing fighter. Why not commission him to say, here's my starship design. Here's my story. Why can't you be the new George Lucas? All right, well, I, I, I have a theory about that. Not all fanboy films that make Star Wars movies. Not all. But I think some of those guys, that is a, in their mind, they're that good. That is a, that's a demo reel for Lucasfilms because they no, want to they're work. all terrible, dude. Except there's, there no, no, is no, one granted, of granted, called, but in your mind, in your mind though. I will give you one, I will give you this one. If you haven't seen it, check out Wingman. That's a Star Wars fan film that is fantastic. It's the the visual effects, the storytelling. It's it's just called Wingman, and it is amazing. But here's the thing. I've got a couple of action figures. I love the movies. I love enjoying the movies. If you're 50-something years old, stop wasting your fucking money on this nonsense. Unless it brings you happiness. Here's the, here's the breakdown. Make and this it very is what simple. I want to hear. I want to hear your take. No, I know guys like this. I know the guys are talking about... I'm guilty of having my own collectibles. For a lot of people, it gives them something to do, to collect, which is all collectibles, is a hobby. But my buddy told me this, and it made me realize, he goes, every time I reach for an action figure, it's like I get transformed back into 79 or 80. And it just brings, they're, they're, they're reliving their childhood, the, you know, the moment of innocence when your parents were alive, and it just takes them back to that time. And also, the topper is, is if you get in it enough, there's a tribe, a community that celebrates this stuff that you immediately belong to. So you have a tribe and a community to belong to and talk about your collectibles and you get that dopamine hit of, I'm 12 years old again and I'm holding Luke Skywalker. Totally get that. What I'm talking about is there's a con going on with these toy manufacturers and the licensees, okay, and the licensors, because they know there's people out there that feel that way. If you look at action figures from Star Wars, the power of the Force collection, those things are all jacked up. Like, they don't even look good. But there's people that collect that will buy those. Like, there's no, um, there's no um, um, being very selective about what you're buying. Like, there's people that have to have all of it. So right. there's, there, there could be somebody, like a Hasbro could be, they go to Lucasfilm and say, okay, we're going to license this. We're going to make a run of toys. And they make them look like shit. However, Lucasfilm says, yeah, they're fine. They go out there. They're not worth anything. But there's well, people that have, it's almost like an addiction. Well, so where it's, do you a, go, it's a compulsion. So where do you go from being, I'm a true collector of Star Wars classic vintage things, right? I totally get the prototype Boba Fett, totally get it. Where do you go from being that guy that's a connoisseur to being the guy that has to buy everything just because it came out? Because a lot of the shit that comes out is crap. It starts with... I want to just get the things from my childhood. And then they go, they get that and they're like, well, I have fun. What else is coming out? Did you know that the biggest moving line that I, unless this is an urban legend, but a few years ago, Star Wars put out retro cards from the seventies that look just like those move faster than anything. Not because of new kids that are coming up, but people wanted to relive their childhood. Like they wanted to like go back to 1978 or 79 when they had paid a dollar for Star Wars figures or looked in the JCPenney Christmas catalog and it takes them back, but they get what they want. And then they go, well, my buddy got that. That's pretty cool. The Stormtrooper looks cool. And next thing you know, it's like, well, I collect kind of. And then, okay. you, then you go to a convention. If it, if it sends you back and it only it's only five bucks. But if it if you're sitting there and it's like, I just found this and it's $500, Grow the fuck up. Well, no, I get that. All right, let, but but again, there are people out there that have not everybody. Because I have some, I have some stuff too. I collect some, not like on that level. But there are people that have compulsive disorders too, and you gotta look at it like this. I know a guy that has to buy every single at the time DVD and then Blu-ray, whether he liked a movie or not. He has to have the whole set of 
Halloween movies. But see, that's that's one thing that I don't like about it. Like, I remember when The Power of the Force came out and you got the Han Solo and you look at it, you're like, this is supposed to be Han Solo? It was like, it looks it, like it, a wrestler. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, their shoulders are out there. They're all, like, they're, 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 all, like, they're all, they're all, like, uh, they're all on steroids. Yeah, it's like, what is, what is this? So, but, but yeah, they mass produced them, which means they're ain't, they're not worth anything. But yet people bought the whole set because they compulsive disorder, right? Well, they have to have the whole thing. To be fair, in, in 1996, uh, so it, Star Wars, after 83, after Return of the Jedi, Star Wars kind of went to the wayside for your Transformers and your right. G.I. Joe. all that stuff. All that stuff. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. The big ones were G.I. Joe and Transformers. That was my brother's generation that they liked that stuff. But in 1996, uh, Star they, before Lucas ever re-released the classic trilogies with the special editions, they did the um, game and the comic book of Shadow of the Empire. Yeah. And they started re-releasing the Star Wars figures with the jacked up looks of the... the Power of the Force, yeah. Power of the Force, a.k.a. Uh, don't do steroids. Right. Power was the big thing. Power right? of the Force. These guys, but, were, they were all just in the gym. But at that point, though, because that, that time gap... The Star Wars figures that were from the 70s through 83 were very, very expensive. They were worth a ton well, of money. They were worth money. So that first, so I get that even though those I mean, figures look like complete shit, as an investor, you're like, oh shit, well maybe this is going to be worth something just like those are. But can we all agree they've always looked like shit? The vintage, oh, yeah. the vintage action figures look like shit yeah. and i i think in the 90s 96 90 96 to like 98 when mcfarland toys came out i remember the sports figures the rock stars i love I, dude i loved all that stuff detailed the oriented detail was and, uh, so very good. articulated the, 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 the movements of them were different. so good so for me it was more about i would rather pay a lot of money for one quality han solo figure that looked like harrison ford versus I need the Harrison. I need the power of the force Han Solo. Right. I need the vintage Han Solo. Well, well here I, I'm sorry. No, no I'm no, sorry to fine. interrupt. So here's what I think. People that grew up in our era, 70s through the 83, that you, some of them might have grown up poor, and they might have gotten one or two Star Wars figures, and they go to class, and everybody has the whole figure line, the Death Star, everything Star Wars, and maybe they. At that point in their life, they weren't able to afford that stuff. So now they're in their 20s, 30s, and they are making the money that their parents couldn't afford for them to have. And they're like, you know what? Now I can afford to do all this. I'm going to buy all this shit now. I'm not taking it back. I think I think, I think, think uh, 70% of it is a waste of time. I think 30% of it, as you guys have convinced me, it's something that brings them back to their childhood. Uh, it, it makes them feel good. But I'm telling you, a lot, a, a lot, of, the, a lot of the products... Are crap. So wait a minute. We we got you thirty percent into it more than you were before this podcast. No, because I've got some. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of doing this, but mine anything that I have, my love for Star Wars or science fiction and Star Trek, the stuff that I do have is well, quality pieces that I'm like, okay, this looks good. I like this. I'm not going to have a room full of oh, just because it came out, I'm going to buy it. Well, and and it's different things. Like for for my wife and I. Our big thing now is travel and doing this and going out to nice restaurants and going to vineyards and doing all that and the occasional Star Wars figure here and there. You know, that's what we love to do. That's our that's our vice now. But for some people, they just good or bad. And again, you go back to hoarders. It's and not I, so much, in my opinion, it's not so much hoarders. It's you also get encouragement because most of the guys that I know that are like what we're describing, including, I don't collect anything on that level, but I have my own collectibles. You get encouragement from the people around you because everybody looks at you, at you or whoever and go, well, there's a lot worse things he could be doing with his money. He could be doing drugs, buying prostitutes, could be out, you know, investing in Ponzi schemes. The guy just wants a Luke Skywalker. Go for it. Well, what's and then they get the they get the positive reinforcement from their friends and family. Like, oh, that's cool. Well, and they go, and, wait till you see next week's your there. your collection, right? What I like about your collection, I've seen it. You're not doing what I'm talking about. You're no. not collecting crap. You've got is is that pinball machine that you have? The kid is that Kiss from one. is that from role models? Yeah, it's the same one. So you have what he's got in his house. He's got the jukebox from nine hundred two one zero. 
Yeah, the really? Peach Pit okay, from all that, ten that's seasons. Like, that's he's like got that movie he's, paraphernalia. Yeah. He's yeah, exactly. He's got the pinball machine, the Kiss pinball machine from Role Models movie in his house. He's got uh, Friday the Thirteenth screen used mask at his house. Those are things, and he's he's a movie location content producer. These are things that are like, oh, that's cool. If I walk into someone's basement and like, you got to see my Star Wars room, and I'm like, you spent all this money on this crap. Awesome. Force Awakens action figures, each sold separately.